This program is brought to you by New Vienta, the V6 reinvented. Get the dog from the laundry and set out for the Stuffing All Trees tour of the suburbs that's tonight live 93. Fetching the stick with Stubbsy tonight, face to face with Richard at the net, Nicole Provis. His life's a fast sitcom guru, John Borhouse. Smith by name, greedy by nature, mental as anything, greedy Smith. And musically we get beautiful and dangerous with the killjoys. Now, here's the man who owns Golden Flash, the world's only racing Labrador. Richard Stubbs! Thanks so much. Oh, Thanks so much and welcome along to Friday Night and Tonight Live. And uh, I was hoping to get through tonight without mentioning the P word, politics, but I just can't. So we'll just mention it a bit. Here we go, four days in and yep, we've broken an election promise. Labor's come straight out and broken an election promise. Did you guys read this in the paper? Trust me, it, it happened. And uh, see, your reaction is typical everyone going, oh really? Oh. <laughs> well, that's a big surprise. Yeah, and I think that's the thing about it. Four days is a quietly impressive record before you just go, we were kidding. But, <laughs> but it's the way they did it. You know, it wasn't sort of your convoluted, oh, look, uh, the figures have come, we're going to have to... They just went, ah, we were kidding. <laughs> and the reaction of all of Australia is, oh, well, the footy's on soon. Or... <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, the Liberals are getting so desperate for a decent candidate for the leadership, I've seen bunches of them down at Portsea Back Beach just trawling. <laughs> Hoping against hope, Harold's out there somewhere. You know? <laughs> Forget it, no chance. Even if he is out there, the dingo's holding him under. <laughs> yeah. While we're... It's tasteless, isn't it? While we're talking about politics and indeed tastelessness, uh, Premier of Victoria Jeff Kennett has stunned a breathless Australia by announcing that, yes, in the 60s, while on army service, he visited Singapore brothels. Uh, he says, yeah, I visited them, but I didn't inhale. <laughs> yeah, right. He said he had more queen and country. Uh, I, either that's funny names for people who work in there, or he's just making that. No, he said he had to, to check it out for the men. You know, it was a bit of a responsibility thing. You can just see him, can't you? Hang on. Actually, it's more, hang on. <laughs> Looks a bit dodgy up ahead. You... You guys stay here, I'll go in and check it out. Cover me. You can see him coming back out about, you know, three minutes later. <laughs> Going in, all clear. Yeah, no, that worked well. Yeah, it's tasteless, isn't it? What other, what other things have been happening this week? Some fairly bizarre stories cropping up in the news all this week. I haven't liked to talk about it too much, but in London, a woman lived with her husband for six months after he died. She just sat him up on her couch in the living room because she couldn't accept he was dead. Now, I don't know much about this, but uh, wouldn't the smell help you accept he was dead? Like when you're just in the kitchen, quietly, you know, scraping off his portion of the dinner, uneaten again, <laughs> after, all of, after all the work I did, you know, there, wouldn't kind of the pungent aroma just come out and tap you on the shoulder and go, Oi, I'm dead. You'll like your life better if you bury me. Really, you will. And you'll have more friends. You know, maybe he was just one of those blokes who never said much anyway. You know, she just puts the paper in his hands and turns the TV on. And life's kind of like normal. You know, it's probably one of those things. I don't know. I think the smell would have to be a killer. I don't know, as I say, much about this. But we had a hamster once who carked under the washing machine. And we didn't get clean clothes for a month. And I figure hubby's got to be more on the nose because he's like chunkier, you know. Speaking of equally bizarre things, this is absolutely true. A priest in Queensland has been arrested for sending pornographic material to ABC personalities. <laughs> How would you find one? 
And, you know, these can't be local, can they? I mean, think about it. If you're going to send filthy pictures, think to yourself, filthy pictures, ABC personality, who do I know? Who do I know? Mr. Squiggle. <laughs> you can just imagine him getting the photos. It's, um... <laughs> it's, uh, it's a beast with two backs, Miss Pat. <laughs> ugly, ugly visual image for you adults at home. The, uh... <laughs> it's nothing really tasteless about that, is it? Yeah, they're quite a bit, really. Well, um, in other somewhat disturbing news, uh, in Wyoming, they've passed a law banning the uh, sexual act in walk-in freezers. <laughs> uh, like, let's take aside for a moment the question of why would you want to? You know, ooh, it's miles below zero. Wacko, get your gear off. <laughs> My other question's got to be, uh, how would you find out about it? You know, what, were two health, health inspectors sitting down to a bit of a steak lunch and went, oh. I think, well, it's one of those sort of nights, isn't it? Well, I just, I wonder about things like this, you know, and also how many people have to do it in freezers before everyone starts noticing and they actually have to pass a law to stop people? Couldn't they have just like shut the doors? I, I can't believe it. I mean, geez, it's, getting, it's getting a bit draconian, isn't it? No sex in freezers. Next up, we're banning sex in dump masters. It's <laughs> always been a bit of a favourite spot of mine, you know. Come your anniversary time, you want a little something special, you rattle around, bang the lid. The, um, anyway. The, um, <laughs> yeah. A certain tone. What other exciting things have been happening this week? Well, of course, we've also got the siege in Wacko continuing. Uh, it's ongoing, and I think it'll be ongoing for quite some time too, given the FBI's latest initiative. You know, they're getting bored, uh, they're now building condominiums around Waco, they're selling the land up, that's going very well. The FBI's latest plan, I've got an idea, will turn big searchlights on them at night time, because they'll work better then, and uh, <laughs> we'll turn... <laughs> well, he's right. We'll, we'll turn the big searchlights on and we'll turn night into day night into day. Thus, they won't ever have us in silhouette properly and we can taunt them by doing terrifying shadow animals. <laughs> it's a bunny rabbit and he's hit hard and, and this should work really well. This should really crack them, you know, just endless daytime, endless light, unless, unless someone in the compound thinks to close the curtains. Yeah, that is the only possible thing that could completely stuff them up. Now, we have a huge thumping show tonight, and I want to get started on it. But before I do, quick word, it is duck season. Wabbit season. Duck season. Wabbit season. <laughs> duck season. Shoot. Boom. The, uh, tomorrow, naturally. And a quick word to all you hunters who are even now oiling up your guns. You know, probably naked while you're doing it. It's a little touch of that, I always think. You know, something very healthy about a man oiling a big gun to go and hurt a small animal. I love it. I think, uh... To all you duck hunters, get out there early and get out there and slaughter a few for me, would you? You just get out there, kill them little birds because they're asking for it. <laughs> hey, them little ducks and the way they taunt you when they quack, 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 quack. Oh, you know they're saying that at you and the smug way they just sit on ponds. I think get up there with a cannon and blow the crap out of them. <laughs> it's only fair. Just a word of warning though. Make sure and kill them first time because you don't want a wounded one. They've got no teeth, but they can give you a nasty wing if you're not careful. <laughs> As I said, we've got a crackerjack show tonight, so let's get it started with the one and only Bridget Duclos. Thanks, Richard. Hello, everyone. Tonight, Australia's first heresy trial for a hundred years, and it's all because one Presbyterian minister backed women priests. Paul Keating joins the ACTU for a sing-along, but there's still no harmony in the Liberal Party. Woody Allen gets the experts' verdict in his child abuse battle, and the country Victorian town that's taking on the pollies over a home for their favourite pig. I'll have all those details in our news later in the show, Stubbsy. Bridget, I lie awake at nights dreaming of your last news stories. <laughs> home for a favourite pig. Gosh, I'll never be able to get through to wait for it, certainly. We go away, we'll have to wait for it. When we go back, more stuff, more sorts of things. This is live throughout Australia. Thanks so 
much. And speaking of Walk This Way, which that song was, see, look, a different cup tonight because, it, oh, sorry, because it's for the walk against want. Now, Sunday week, Sunday, March 28, thousands of people all over Australia are going to be walking against want. And you don't just have to walk. You can rollerblade, jog, do all sorts of things. If you'd like a sponsor book, that's the number to call, and it's a really good cause. See what you can do. There are people standing by right now to take your calls, and it's a free call. They really are, well, or right, one person. Uh, one person got short straw sitting there going, hurry up, get on with it. Uh, but if you'd like a sponsor book, she is waiting. Say hello to Beryl and uh, give her a call. Meantime, number one in Australia, top 40 around the world, and she doesn't even know Molly Moldrum, though I'm sure he'd be a big fan of her punishing forehand. Australia's top woman tennis player, please welcome Nicole Provost, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Nicole. Hi, how are you going? Good, thanks. That's now, good. thanks for dragging yourself away from a hot dinner date. I know you, you came straight away. Just the entree. Yeah. What did you have for entree, by the way? Uh, a Caesar salad. Beautiful. Yeah, because, it's very nice. because you're in training or because you um, just chose that? No, I eat pretty much anything. I mean, I try to watch what I eat, but because um, I sort of try and burn a lot of calories, I can sort of eat what I want. <laughs> yeah, the tennis circuit's so constant. Yeah. Is, are you on a constant sort of diet, exercise regime, or do you have um, to sort of live a bit of a life as well? I mean, you've got to li live a bit of a life as well. If I crave for a chocolate, then I'll, I'll have a chocolate. Because, um, you know, normally my day is probably when I'm at home, it's about a five-hour day uh, training. and It's hitting and running and do all, doing all those sorts of things. So I can, I mean, I'm allowed to indulge in those sorts of things. So you train for five hours, what, six days a week? Uh, five days? Three. Three yeah. big days. <laughs> uh, a solid two. I wish it was three. A solid, solid two. two. Well, yesterday. You yeah, did. yeah. Um, no, I'd practice about five days a week and have the weekends off, but I still run and do those other things most days. Well, it is your full-time job, and it's going it really is. well, too. Yeah. Just got all your rankings here. You rank yeah. number one in Australia in the singles, three in the doubles, 35 in the singles, and 28 in the doubles on mm -hmm. a world level. And, of course, you got to the quarters of the Australian Open this year. Yeah. So that's a great start to the year, isn't it? Um, yeah, it was great because normally I'm a bit scratchy because the sort of the tennis circuit sort of finishes mid-November, so no one uh -huh. can play any tournaments. So, And normally it takes me a while to get into sort of tournaments, but I started off the Hopman Cup really well and it sort of led over into the uh, Australian Open, which mm. was great. Well, let's, uh, we've actually got some footage of you taking points off uh, Gabrielle Sabatini. So let's look at it just so you can really enjoy it. OK. Provis was attempting to become the first Australian female into the quarterfinals of the Open since Anne Minter back in 1988. And despite being broken in the very first game, she hit back to lead Sabatini 3-1 in the first set. Sabatini was shell-shocked by her opponent's tactics, but managed to square the first set at 3-all. Provis continued to impress her hometown crowd, mixing it up to Sabatini and held two set points. Oh, yes, well done. Can you just love that? No. <laughs> what? Why don't you love it? I've actually got that on, on tape at home, and uh, bet. they're actually good because I try and keep most of my matches when I get to play on centre court just to watch them because it's great for me to uh, dance see around what the room I'm doing going... right and wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was like that all the time, but it wasn't in that match. Yeah, I guess not. But, uh, but the circuit must be so... The, the thing that strikes me about tennis in general is that it must be hard to get an overall picture of your game and how it's improving or where its faults are because it seems to me you're just on an endless treadmill of oh, here I am, played in a couple of yeah. games, I'm out, oh, yeah. on to the next, and oh, played in a few more, I got through. And, yeah, you know what I mean? It must be hard to get an overall pattern It is. You sort of, at the start of the year, you plan your schedule out. Um, I try and play 24 tournaments a year, uh, and four of those tournaments are two-week tournaments at Grand Slam. So I spend probably a good seven and a half months of the year away from Australia. That's playing tournaments all mm. the time. So... You've really got to know what you're doing and sort of keep interested in the whole sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, it must be so grinding. Yeah. How do you work out what tournaments to play? Do you work it out on a basis of, uh, well, these ones are worth so much money, so I need right. to do six of those <laughs> to keep it up, and then the, these ones are good because not many go in them, so I could clean these up and get the prize money, and, That's the and way you get a balance sort of, of all yeah, that? Yeah, you've got to try and look at it that way. Of course, you try and play the big ones, mm. too, obviously, to try and do well, and the big ones that you play, like the Australian Open and things like that, if you do well in those, your ranking goes up a lot quicker because they're bigger tournaments and more money and those sorts of things. Um, so you sit down and you try and plan your tournaments to what surface you like playing on and on day four certainly take some careful planning to do is it, it true that you just play in europe because you're born to shop <laughs> and it's an excuse to get you out there to shop all over the best shops in europe <laughs> this is it's part of it <laughs> it's horribly true isn't it admit it i always come home with sort of i leave australia with a suitcase and another bag and i end up sending stuff home from england like six tea chests or something like that to nice. sort of